Charles Oliveira made a very bold statement, not only after getting stripped of the lightweight title, um, after losing it on the scales, man. Scale gate, half a pound over, the Brazilians not coming in on a weight. I don't know what's happening. But he made a very interesting statement, and I want you to take on it. He says, um, I am the champion, right? He says, at the end of the day, there is the lightweight champion has a name. His name is Charles Dubronx Oliveira. But this is the one that I really, really like felt some way about in a positive way. He said, I am the enlightened one. And I don't know if that was lost through trans translation which maybe he was trying to say he was the chosen one but an enlightened one chosen one this is a man of god this is a religious man so i feel like there's a difference between being the champion and knowing you're the champion and believing you're the champion and then believing you're the champion because you've been ordained by god you know what i mean i think there's a little difference in belief there and that extra little bit in belief i don't care what your religious affiliation is religious or not that can do something for you in a fight especially when you're getting rocked every single one of your fights and then you're coming back to either knock out your opponent or submit them and that's exactly what he did to Justin Gaethje brother how impressive was Charles Oliveira being able to walk through the fire that is Justin Gaethje take the man's hurt him take the man's back and choke him out I mean talk to me brother what do you think wild Derek absolutely wild this dude's able to eat punches that would have knocked out a small horse literally everybody's been saying it those punches would crack anybody and drop you out. You're out for a week. You're out sleeping teeth on the curb. Except for Charles Oliveira. He gets hit twice. One big uppercut. One, one. I think it was a left. It was a right. Whatever it was. Dropped him, put him down. But the jiu-jitsu saved him. Gaethje doesn't want to rush in because the jiu-jitsu. Maybe it's that. Maybe just he is the blessed one, man. The endowed one. The one that's going to be here. You know, the warrior of God. I, man, either way. Very impressive. It was, it was a hell of a thing to see his chin take those shots, brother. I agree. And I think th that there's one word we need to talk about when we speak about Charles Oliveira from this point forward. And it is well-rounded. I guess that's a compound word or whatever. But well-rounded. That is the point that I have here. Because at this point, we've seen a huge elevation in his game. His jiu-jitsu has always been there. He's been submitting people from day one. But his striking, his Muay Thai is taken to a, a, another level, brother. I mean... It is rare when you're seeing a dude like Charles Oliveira who is, I mean, when's the last time you saw Justin Gaethje get cracked the way that he did against Charles Oliveira? I'm talking about a straight down the pipe and you got Justin Gaethje on Queer Street. I think it was like the first or second punch that Oliveira landed in the fight. Gaethje was rocked right out the gate. So I'm like, okay, what kind of power does this man have? Or this is my question to you. To me, it seems like Charles Oliveira might not have the most ridiculous power, but his precision is is ungodly it is otherworldly you know what i mean the way he cracks you right on the chin with a straight punch and then instead of going ground and pound i'm gonna smash you jumps goes jumps straight into jujitsu mode and says all right we're gonna grapple i'm gonna put you in a nice position turn you into a pretzel and then take your back and choke you i mean how impressive has the muay thai increased in your opinion that has led to higher success rates in the jujitsu yeah, Derek, I agree with you 100%, man. His striking, his, his the improvement in Charles Oliveira's striking overall and fluidity with it, technique in general. You can hear Joe Rogan plays, praise it all the time that he is the perfect technique. It does lend so much of a benefit for him to think like, oh, yeah, like I can go and I can improve in this one aspect because I have that jiu-jitsu background where I'm so dominant. I can get submissions at any point. We even saw it. He's fluid, man, in on the ground. He can roll from one to two to three and get the submission even on a very talented wrestler, you know, in Justin Gaethje aspect um but also there the one thing that impresses me more, a little bit more than that more so same either way impresses me as well is uh which i think you have to also add into his well-roundedness that you were talking about is his resilience man being able to get cracked like that and still have the mental fortitude to push through whether it's you know him giving god giving where he's thinking in his head that i'm the chosen one that mental resilience is something to speak for that I think goes yeah. unappreciated by a lot of people that are sleeping on him. Yeah, brother. And, I mean, DC's been saying it. Rogan's been saying it. But everyone's like, where did this Charles Oliveira come from? Like, this, we've seen this dude fight for years, and it wasn't this guy. There was some quit in him. There was some, I'm not willing to push forward when I'm faced with adversity. But now, it's like almost like it's almost a necessary aspect of his game. He needs to get rocked to wake up a little bit and then push forward and destroy his opponent. I think there's also something to be said that Justin Gaethje, like, like you said, has that power that could knock out a small horse, hit Charles Oliveira with that, and Oliveira just gets back up and is like, all right, well, what's up? Let's scrap. Like, you can't sit there and jump into Charles Oliveira's guards. You're giving him proper time to recover, stand back up, and be like, let's get back to the fight. That's the problem. He's so well-rounded. There's At this point, I think it's fair to say that Charles Oliveira is indeed the elite of the elite in the lightweight division. I mean, when you look at the people that he's been able to put away, it's been ridiculous. In his last five, the only person he hasn't been able to finish is El Kukui himself, which is going to be another note on how impressive Michael Chandler was at UFC 274, but that's not what we're talking about right now. 
this is the the big big takeaway from this specific matchup aj charles Oliveira is the first man to finish justin gaethje in the first round in his entire career this is a dude who is built off of resilience i mean himself justin gaethje this dude is a war animal this is a man who takes damage all day and he goes about a very gladiator style so in his three in his four finishes that four times he's lost in his career and they're all finishes eddie alvarez finished him in the third round. Dustin Poirier finished him in the fourth round. Habib finished him in the second round. And Oliveira finished him in the first round. So when we're talking about elite company right there, I mean, we're talking about the Habibs, the Poiriers, the Eddie Alvarezes, and Oliveira is the only man that could finish him in the first round. Like, how how much does that speak to you in terms of his greatness right now? Man, that's insane because I didn't know that stat before yeah. you just said it right there, bro. That's wild because Justin Gaethje, he really is. And especially the mentality he had going into before his you know, his championship run where he said he wanted to be the most entertaining fighter in the UFC and then to change his mindset to be the, the champion. Sure, that mindset changed, but that grittiness, that willingness to be you know, the, the dude who's going to go in there hit for hit and be the most entertaining person still there. And the chin, the chin of Justin Gaethje is always going. So to be able to be the guy who's finishing him in the first round – again more speaks to how well-rounded Charles Oliveira is growing year and year and year after and after man you have to keep counting all of these things back into how just serious this dude takes the game and his takes his approach to martial arts and that he's still working on all these aspects that in the past we've seen him suffer on man it, it speaks levels it's it's very very impressive unfortunately for the scale gate that's like the one big asterisk which is so yeah. hard whether whether the the scale was always you know, that half pound over, like some fighters are saying or whatnot, it, it's unfortunate, but it is very impressive either way, the fact that he's still growing. Absolutely. And that's what I was going to say to kind of cap this off is that all the cards were stacked against Charles Oliveira going into this fight. So that's what makes it even more impressive than I've already stated is because he's the first UFC uh, champion in the history of the company to lose his belt on the scales. Now you think of DC, you think of Davidson Figueiredo when you think about these scale gate controversies. Now DC might have gotten away with one, brother. You know, the towel holding it up, I'm just going to say. But Charles Oliveira is officially the first man, right? Um, is it because he's Brazilian? Is it because he's a newish champion? I don't know. I don't even want to make those assumptions. But I will say I do think that a lot of commissions would have given the benefit of the doubt to a lot of other champions. I'll just say that. So not only do you have the, the deck stacked against you, right? You have all these mental issues going into the Justin Gaethje fight. You have Justin Gaethje kind of taunting, saying, you're still cutting weight. I'm over here already back at 165. And then you put on a stunning performance like this, brother. There's nothing else to say, but Charles Do Bronx, you are the lightweight champion, whether you have the belt or not. You are the people's champion. And uh, that's really, I think that's fair to say, to cap it off on that one, man. You have anything else for me? I like it, man. Yeah. I, I agree. And that's exactly how I see it, too. People's champ, man. Yeah. Leave it like that. Charles Do Bronx on 11 fight win streak. He's finished the I mean, majority of those fights. I mean, come on, man. Whether we see Islam Makashev or we see Conor McGregor fight for that vacant title because he is now officially the number one contender in the lightweight division, it does not matter. I do think Do Bronx will reign supreme. And with that being said, we can move on from that championship matchup. <laughs>